have this clip courtesy of DJ Academics. I shouldn't even pause this because it's fucking six nine screaming. Um, very interesting clip that I'm going to play here. So this is DJ. This is um a clip from DJ Academics' podcast called Off the Record. Yeah, Off the Record on Spotify, and he had a sit down with six nine. Hassan Campbell and Wack 100 and you already know with those lists of names it's going to be an absolute crazy situation one thing that I can't really get my head around when it comes to 6 ix 9 I think I'm going to play the clip so you can see and you can kind of maybe get your glean your own opinion from this but if I'm not mistaken to give some context on the clip Hassan Campbell in one of his videos said something along the lines of oh um uh because I think yes in 6 9 got kidnapped before he ratted and everything he got kidnapped by his own crew when I think his own crew felt like he wasn't maybe giving money or he was or he was suspect. I don't know. Something happened that led to Six Nine being kidnapped by his own gang. Sam Campbell said in his podcast, Hey, that would never be me, that could never be me. I would never get caught lacking like that, right? Um, but then um Six Nine basically puts it, twists it the other way and says, Okay, it's okay to say that to me, but then if if I got caught lacking, what do you call what happened to Nipsey? What do you call what happened to Pop Smoke? And what do you call what happened to King Vaughn? Basically, that's what he's saying in that in that regard. And he's kind of screaming and shouting about it. And they're having this back and forth. But I'll play the clip so you can hear what 6 ix saying. Um, you know, he's not the he's not he's not the best conversationist in the world because he just screams and gets irate, but I can kind of see where he's coming from. And also I think it's complete gobbledygook. That is what the I point said. I proved. This is the point I proved. Said, right? He said if he was in that position, I think I'm like half new. I said, yo, it happened to the best of us. I said, what if you was in that position? And he said, if you was lacking. He said, I'm never lacking. I said, all right, cool. He going to bring it the gangster route. So what you going to do when you lacking? So Nipsey, was Nipsey a stand tall nigga? I believe, I don't know him. So I can't say. All right, so what, what? The best get killed. So I can't take nothing away from him because he got murdered. So the best well, shit happening well, niggas listen, too. Yes, it does. So you listen, shoes, look, nigga? So, this is what I want. Was Pop listen. Smoke real? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Was Pop Smoke a stand up tall nigga? Was he... A, a he, was solid a, nigga? he was a baby. I don't know. He was a baby. Okay, I, I'm asking you, was Pop Smoke a stand tall nigga? I can't I say know. that. Was Pop Smoke? I know. I, don't I, know. Believe, he is. I believe he is. I don't Nobody know. Nobody answering now? He was a rapper. I didn't know. All right, all right, cool, 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 cool. Was King Vaughn a stand up tall nigga? King Vaughn was a get busy nigga. All right, so why was he, he was lacking? Dope. Why was huh? he lacking? You know what? Why was he lacking? It doesn't matter. You missing. I, I don't understand. So what the is point. King Vaughn right now? He's dead. But what's the point, though? I'm right then. So, so, so King Bond is a solid nigga, and he got killed, right? The nigga, the nigga poked out and put five in him, right? And he died, right? So King Bond died, lacking. You hurt my feelings. No, 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 no. Hear what I'm saying? May he rest in King peace, man. King Bond died lacking. Nipsey died lacking. Pop Smoke died lacking. Right. So niggas can't lack? No, you can't. All right. Kill or be killed in these streets. All right. So there's nothing to talk about. So when you say yo, shit happened to you, shit happened to niggas. Don't pick your fucking tool. Why you get, listen, why you think I say? Okay, so you, you get the gist of what he's trying to say here. And then the caption says the following. He says, my point is for people who don't understand. Quote, unquote, I was lacking when shit happened to me. It happens to the best of us, to the best. So why single me out? When your favorite rapper gets caught lacking and doesn't survive the situation, they never spoken down on. I guess it's just that it's cool to hate on 6 9 now, which is cool. I don't care, but I understand my point is not a math problem. It's a simple common sense. So the the kind of the kind of basis or the conclusion of this whole thing I don't understand is that for whatever reason it feels like 6 ix on this quest to tell people that even though he snitched even though he might be a federal informant even though he put half of most of his gang um in prison based on the words that he said by testifying in court and kind of went against the oath of being a gangster and being a somewhat of a criminal he thinks that he can somehow still come out and maintain the same energy and still be dangerous right still be somebody that people can are wary of coming around or getting next to or stepping to or having a problem with because he has it on him or because he's dangerous or because he's willing to kind of die on his on his word whatever it may be right but the issue here with this is not even that because i you know there's plenty of actual legit gangsters who have killed people who have been involved with some very very you know heinous things to people right out there in the world who have come out and snitched or who come out who did snitch when they're in prison and maybe come out earlier with the time wherever it may be but the but there's nothing there's no one out there that's kind of doubting their gangster no one out there's thinking they're not tough 
it's just they went against the code and when you go against the code it it, be, it basically invalidates everything you've done you know you'd imagine being a criminal or being somebody that kind of operates in the underworld part of the reason why you do that is because you kind of want to be off grid and the only way to kind of maintain some sort of law or some sort of order is to have some kind of moral code or something that you kind of stand behind right and you'd imagine that would be the kind of muerta, right the idea that you don't talk to police ever um you stick by your brothers um you know come rain or shine like you got into this life of crime knowing the bet knowing the kind of pros and the cons right the pros were you're going to be able to make money fast you were going to get you know rep you were going to be able to do some amazing things fly around the world bloody blah 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 but the cons were that you legitimately might go to prison or you might get killed or somebody in your crew might betray you but those were the cons where you knew what the positive and negatives were going into it so it's very difficult to come now be somebody like a 6 9 who was never a gangster to begin with that's the thing we have to keep clear he was just a rapper guy right trying to make it and of course you know aligning himself with treyway was a way to basically legitimize his gangster legitimize his street cred and it basically allowed him to have the career that he's still eating off now so to sit there and somehow try to justify your snitching or to justify the fact that you got caught lacking because some of the best of the best got caught lacking doesn't mean jack shit because no one's comparing him to pop smoke no one's comparing him to king born no one's even comparing him to nipsey because we all know he's not that guy because we know more likely than not if those guys were still alive and they'll put in the same situation that six nine was knowing full well that he put hits out on people and he still put those guys in prison even for a little while they would never tell or you would imagine you would hope they wouldn't tell and I don't really see why that's so hard to see. Like, I, I, I don't get this, but, but, but I guess that goes to show, I guess that goes for most of the world, right? Most of the world out there, you see even thing going on with like, this is a weird correlation to make, but you see it even with the body positivity movement there's body positivity which is cool fine except you can accept the skin you're in you can be whatever weight and size you want and still be beautiful of course we all agree with that but then to sit there and say your you know being big and beautiful is just as beautiful as you know Giselle Bunch and you know modeling something for Victoria's Secret that just doesn't make any sense you can't have everything yeah you know I mean you can have some things I think that's progress being made where people are not vomiting at the sight of a fat person on the billboard but to say that that person on the billboard is the same as runway models is not the is not the truth because we know what looks better especially in fashion type clothes on what type of frame or we know what convention looks better based on years and years and hundreds of millions of years of, of evolution that's the thing i kind of see with what he's going on good doing like he's trying to say just because i snitched doesn't mean i'm not puss doesn't mean i'm not doesn't mean i'm pussy i can still be about my biz but it's like no you can't because you were a civilian before you got involved with treyway treyway they made you somewhat of a criminal made you blood which then allowed you to have this street cred which then allowed you to have this career and and clearly as well off the back of it they also gave you amazing tunes because since he's separated treyway his music has never been this that's not the other thing too i want people to i would love to get his insight on or someone to ask him an interview what's with the lack of quality in music why have you gone from making decent tracks that were annoying to now making unlistable tracks like unlistable i still remember when he dropped his first album i was banging in the gym for like a week straight it was really great gym material because i think it might have been like under 50 minutes there was like nine ten tracks or something of just two minute fucking bangers that just slapped you across the head and of course at that time you thought he was about what he was about so he kind of gave you an extra sort of pep in your steps or listening to like being the seagull back in the day rapping his flipping you know um rob robbery and stick em up flipping um bars it's just get it just got you going so i would like to for people to ask him that hey six nine why is it that your music now sounds trash compared to what you were doing beforehand you know the street cred is gone we understand that you're not with the gang anymore we understand that but why is the music so bad were the, were the gang also supplying music they were not only supplying you with street cred they were not only supplying you with protection they were not only supplying you with connections and making sure you're good wherever you went they were also supplying you with it looks like writing ability and talent because so far his music has been trash compared to anything else he's put out before and it just is what it is but again interesting interview i guess it's going to be dropping soon or maybe it's out already i'm not too sure um ah, the other other thing is all that's flipping interesting in the interview um hassan campbell mentioned in passing that flipping alpo martinez the legendary gangster who was um partly based on the what's it what's that movie called 
Uh, I forgot it escapes my head, but you know how Alfred Martinez is. Who, who died? Who died recently? Who came out of jail? Who double one a snitch came out of jail and was basically taunting everybody by parading himself around Harlem, driving flipping Harley Davidsons and shit. He allegedly um, had caught two bodies when he came back home. So he got involved in some pastor with somebody, and he still managed to catch two bodies without getting caught. That's some serious killer shit allegedly that's the case which is mad to reveal on a podcast at that offhand he was like yeah but he's dead in it is what it is but it's like jesus christ man who are these two bodies that he dropped does anybody know this else know this was just something only known on the streets like wild wild stuff man that's what that's the danger i feel like with these podcasts in general when you get guys around the table um kind of weirdly enough you know measuring each other's dicks right it always ends up like this people has end up, people always end up spilling news that they probably shouldn't spill just because they want to look like they're down and you know eventually it comes down to bite them all in the ass and obviously that's what happened here so um check it out when it does come out i guess um six nine whack 100 has uncomfortable dj academics it should be an interesting one just to see where his kind of mindset or mind state is at, at the moment but we all know this isn't going to end well overall because he clearly has a death wish he clearly doesn't want to be around anymore and if anything he probably would be happy dying as a somewhat of a snitch martyr or something you know what i mean because he, he i don't know you would imagine coming out of prison off the back of the charges that he was on facing the time that he was facing you just want to come and come out and sort of maybe turn your life around and be a sort of example to others that hey maybe living that life of crime isn't the best way to go about things but if anything he's been doubling down on something that he never stood for clearly he can't stand for anymore because he snitched but he's still trying to convince the world that he's not he's still that guy it's like you can't have everything my friend you can't you have to pick and you know you you make the choices you make in life as a guy you have to just stand behind it it just is what it is but you know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong